Okay, a little review from last time, and we'll just build on it a little bit. Okay? So we're not going to do something new today. All right. So a little review. How would we solve this? If we have three revolutions per second and two pi ratings per revolution, what would you do? Cancel your revolutions. And then three times two pi is six pi. And it would be radians per second. Remember that from last time? That was a long time ago, last Thursday. No, it was last Friday. So that wasn't that long ago. Okay. So revolutions cancel. So this would be 255 pi and B feet per minute. Okay. So we good? So I don't have to do a bunch of those. Um, revolutions per minute is how many radians per minute? Multiply it by 2 pi. So revolutions cancel, so it's 80 pi radians per minute. Okay? So you guys can work through those. All right. Now, what's number seven? A windmill generating electricity has a blade 30 feet long, depending on the wind. It rotates at various velocities. Find the angular velocity in radians per second. If the tip of the blade of the windmill is rotating at a rate of 55 revolutions per second. Now, in this, 55 revolutions per second, and we want radians per second in the end. We want radians per second. Does it matter that it's 30 feet long? No. In angular velocity, the length of the radius doesn't matter. Not at all. But we have to, to get it into radians per second, we have to multiply by 2 pi radians over one revolution. And then you have to multiply 55 times 2 pi. And you do it on your calculator, and I don't know what that would be because I don't have a calculator on me. But I know some of you out there have a calculator. And you take 55 times 2 times pi, it'd be 300 and almost 50. Three forty five point six, then is what you're saying, right? Round to the nearest tenth. Yeah. See if you didn't have hair in front of one eye, you could see that better and you could I'm sorry. I just had to say that. All right. So when you have a length given to you, and this is revolutions per day. And if we want radians per second, does the length matter? If we're talking about the angular velocity, does the length matter? No. Angular velocity, length doesn't matter. So you'd have 47,673 revolutions per day. I want radians per second. Okay. So I'm going to multiply by 2 pi radians in one revolution to get to radians. But now i got to get from days to seconds. How many hours are there in a day? So one day is 24 hours. Why didn't I put 24 hours over one day? Because days in the bottom here, it has to cancel. So it has to be in the top over here or else it won't cancel. So now I have hours on the bottom. How many seconds are in an hour? 3,600, because there's 60 seconds in a minute, 60 seconds in an hour. So in one hour, there's 3,600 seconds. So you take this big old number, 47,673, times two, times five, divided by 24, divided by 3,600. <coughs> and after you do all that math, what do you get?
peanut gallery back there doesn't even have one calculator out between the four of them. <laughs> What'd you get, Justine? That didn't sound very promising. What'd you get? Yes. Um, three point five. Three point five, Grant. What do you think about three point five? Yeah. 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 We're good. Three point five. Okay. The table saw problem. We'll have a few table saw problems because you just need practice at that because that's a test question. So if a table saw goes 3,650 revolutions per minute, and we want to know how fast that table saw would be going down the road in miles per hour, okay? How do I get rid of revolutions? If you don't know this by now, you're struggling. Put your mask up. Two pi radians over one revolution. Now, since this is linear velocity, the radius is important. So my radius, in one radius, how long is my one radius? Not 13 inches. 6.5 inches. My radius, because it's a 13 inch diameter blade, so it means my radius is 6.5 inches. So it's 6.5 inches over one radius. So radius and radians cancel, revolutions and revolutions cancel, and I have inches per minute. But I want miles per hour. So now I'm gonna change inches into miles. How do I change inches into miles? Well, let's change inches into feet. How many inches are in a foot? There are 12 inches in one foot. And then there are how many feet in a mile? In one mile, there's 5,280 feet. If you don't know that yet, you got to memorize that because that is something you need to memorize for this quiz. That's something you need to memorize for this chapter test. Memorize 5,280 feet in a mile. Now, we have minutes. We need hours. How many minutes are in an hour? 60 minutes in one hour. Okay. So, feet cancel with feet. Inches cancels with inches. Minutes cancels with minutes. And I have miles per hour. So, 3,650 times 2 times pi times 6.5 times 60. Hit equals, divided by 12, hit equals, divided by 5,280, hit equals. What do you get? Yep. 141.2 miles per hour. That table saw, it is moving down that road. All right. Number 12. Find the angular velocity in radians per minute and the linear velocity in inches per minute of a point at the edge of a 6.2 diameter record spinning at 46 revolutions per minute. What's a record? It's a vinyl, yeah. When I grew up, eight tracks were popular. If you don't know what an eight track tape is, it's a tape that had, you could put it in two sides as a big cassette tape and it would either play it had eight tracks on each side, so it had 16 songs or 16 songs total, eight on one side, eight on the other. So you'd have to flip it in your eight track tape player, but it, it would go in order. So, yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, because. The, yeah, but still, there was two speeds for records. 
It was a 45 and a 33. 45 revolutions per second and 33 revolutions per second. Very good. Because I had a little record player. I had little records like this growing up, and I would switch it from 45 to 33 to make the people's voices go really slow and, or else be really fast and really sound like this. Okay, so whatever. Yeah, the chipmunks, in other words. All right, so angular velocity. What does not matter in this problem when we talk about angular velocity? The diameter doesn't matter. So you're just changing 46 revolutions per minute to radians per minute. And then once you get that answer, because these two make that answer, then you take that times the radius, 3.1 inches per one radius, and then that's that answer, okay? A Ferris wheel was built for an exposition. It held 2,100 people. That's a lot of people on one Ferris wheel. It had a diameter of 246 feet and took 30 minutes to make one revolution. Find the linear velocity for the people riding the wheel. What is the information that doesn't matter in there? 2,100 people. We don't care about how many people it had. We do care about the diameter and how long it took. One revolution every 30 minutes, and we got to get it in feet per second. So I know there's two pi radians in one revolution. And then the one radius is what? What's the radius if it's 246 feet diameter? 123 feet for the radius. So then I get feet per minute. And then I know that I have to change it into seconds. So in one minute, there are 60 seconds. Okay, so then you do the math. When you're asked to find the difference in linear velocity, you have to do this problem twice. Once for 16, once for 9. It's a table saw problem, but you have to do it twice. Once for 16, once for 9, and then subtract your two answers. A printing press has a roller 15 inches in diameter, and it's going 80 feet per second. What's the radians per second? So they give you the linear velocity. <coughs> you need to work backwards to find the angular velocity. So if it's 80 feet per second, and we want radians per second, And if it's 15 inches in diameter, I have to change my feet into inches. So I know one foot is 12 inches. And then if the roller is 15 inches in diameter, what's the radius? The one radius is how many inches? 7.5 inches. So... Inches and inches cancel, feet and feet cancel, and I'll get radians per second if you do the math. Jupiter has a radius of 43,000 miles and rotates one revolution every 10 hours. What's the linear speed? Well, I know there's two pi radians in one revolution, and there are 43,000 miles. Oop, in, yeah, in one radius. And that would give me miles per hour, right? Now, if you were on the North Pole, if you were standing directly on the North Pole and a day passed, what would you do? You would go like this and it'd take how long for you to go all the way around 24 hours 
It'd take you 24 hours. Now, if you're living at point A up in northern South Dakota, somewhere in northern South Dakota, you're about 45 degrees down. You're halfway between the equator and the North Pole. Okay? Around Webster, around south of Webster somewhere, it's 45 degrees. Um, so you would be going a little faster than that person just twirling around in no man's land. And on the equator, you'd be traveling even faster because you'd be going a further distance, okay? So if this planet takes 26 hours to make a revolution, one revolution in 26 hours, What's the radians per hour? Well, you just multiply by 2 pi radians over 1 revolution. Okay? If you're on the equator and you get pi over 13 radians per hour. Now, because you're not on the equator, you got to figure out your radius here. Now, the radius of the planet is 3850. That's this. <coughs> 3850. So, how do I figure out, this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, right? How do I go from the hypotenuse to the side of a 45, 45, 90? Remember geometry. You go from the hypotenuse to the side, you do what? Divide. Divide by what? Square root of 2. Take 3850, divide by the square root of 2, and you get a number. What's 3850 divided by square root of 2? Sounds good to me. So your radius up there is 2,722 miles from your center point. So you take pi times 2722 divided by 13, and you get the linear velocity in miles per hour. Okay. A belt connects two pulleys with a radius of six inches and eight inches, okay? What is this 30 feet per second? Is that a linear velocity or a angular velocity? Linear velocity, exactly. So then you need to figure out the angular velocity. So no matter where you're at, if this is going 30 feet per second, where is the, anywhere along this belt, what's the linear velocity? 30 feet per second. It's not going to slow down. So the answer for these is 30 feet per second for the linear velocity. The angular velocity will depend on the radius of this, okay? Because you're given a linear velocity. So if you're given a linear velocity of 30 feet per second and you want radians per second, well, we got to get rid of the radius. So I know that there's a six inch radius, so I gotta change feet to inches. So in one foot, there's 12 inches. And then the radius, my one radius is six inches. So for point B, I get 60 radians per second, because inches and inches and feet and feet cancel. So I get radians per second. If we have eight inches, it's still 30 feet per second because you're going the same linear velocity. 12 inches in a foot, because that's how many inches are in one foot. But then your radius is eight inches. Okay? So if you do the math, um, 45 radians per second. Okay? And then... Mechanical advantage. 
When you're riding a 10 speed bike, it's different than riding a basic bike that you had when you were a kid because you have a mechanical advantage <coughs> with the wheels, the size of the wheels and the cogs. If there's 56 teeth here and only 28 teeth here, okay, then your mechanical advantage, what's 56 divided by 28? Two, you have a mechanical advantage of two. So when you go one revolution per second spinning your pedals, how many revolutions per second does your wheel go? Two revolutions per second. So you start out with two revolutions per second, and then you're going to multiply by... 2 pi radians over 1 revolution times how many inches? 22 inch diameter, so 11 inch radius, so 11 inches over 1 radius. So now you got inches per second, and you need to change that to miles per hour. Okay? You got quite a few problems to do today. Okay? So it'll take you most of the class period to work on it. I'm not going to throw a quiz at you yet on Thursday. I think we need to do this, practice this for a while, get this down. We'll do, ooh, but Thursday is a full day. Mm, I think eh, Thursday we'll review and do a sample quiz. And then next tu next Tuesday, because Friday is an A day, so we don't have class till next Tuesday. So then next Tuesday, we'll take the quiz. Okay, so sample quiz next time. So yeah, we're just doing one thing today. We'll call this good for today. So you got 20 minutes before lunch, an hour after, or 45 minutes after lunch to work. All right, so take 210 times... Pi over 180. And then reduce that fraction. So take 210 over 180 and reduce it. Well, 210 over 180 divided both by 10 is 21 over 18, right? What number goes into both 21 and 18? Three. So it's 7 pi over 6. And that's the answer. Okay? That's all you have to do. Okay. You're converting degrees into radians there. <laughs>